about the round table? Oh yeah, how did you find the round table? I found it very interesting. It would have been more interesting if the um, we had more of a range of people because five of the people were from the same division. But even at that, there were so many ideas that were put forward that it was really informative because we see it all from a different light. So when from the rural divisions, which are smaller communities that we're dealing with, they have different problems and different ways of looking at it than the bigger communities like Calgary and Edmonton. Most of them, well, all of them said we need to keep it going because we have these conversations going now and we're finding that we're meeting needs for each other. We can answer each other's questions. And I found that everybody had a voice as we were going around, even the elders. Uh, as So when we were at one table and Lewis would like, would, wanted to share smudging and the importance of it and the importance that we look at traditions of the regions that we live in and of the people that uh, we deal with. So, it, and that was resonated throughout um, with about the traditions and, and how we really have to give the voice and listen to what they're saying. I've seen growth in a lot of the attitudes. We're not, um, we're opening up the narrow-minded. There's more conversation now when I, especially when I come into the school, there's more conversation about what can we do? How could we do it better? Um, where can I go to find out more information? And um, we're getting more of our teachers looking at that as professional development. Uh, so they're looking to the future. So, and our biggest question is, is where, how are we going to continue? How are we going to move forward? And so they're, they're always saying, okay, what can we do next year? Because a lot of them don't want to just do, get a hoop dancer in or whatever. They want to really infuse it with what they're doing, make it part of the program, pro program entire program of studies, rather than just a one-off or just social studies. We were trying to think of a way to um, meet the needs of the teachers uh, at a cold deer meadow and one of the ways that we discussed is the teachers hadn't had a chance to voice what they knew already and what they needed to move forward. So we came up with a plan so uh, Solange came in for the one day um, or two days I should say and I met with their classes and did FNMI activities with their classes while they were able to meet one-on-one -on -one with Solange and she it gave that safe and uh, trust situation where it was a one-on-one, -on -one. it wasn't shared um, outside of that. And those teachers came away with a really positive attitude about, and really excited about their next step in it. And the next step was to decide what unit they wanted to do, so lessons they wanted to do in their classes and how they could have that, have that time to collaborate because that time is so important and the school provided um, substitutes to go in so that the teachers could meet as a team and collaboratively plan using the resources and Solange's guidance as um, they were doing the project. And so then they took it back into their classes and really excited about talking to me afterwards about how it worked so well for them and now they've got the idea that they can move forward with it. And several of them have even come up because we're doing the seven grandfather teachings so they came to um, a resource workshop and they're just so excited that they can uh, infuse this it's not teaching it as a one-off it's let's do this throughout our curriculum so they're really excited about moving forward the only thing that they say is there's so much um, and it was really hard to narrow it down this is what i want to start at because they'd like to use all of it. <laughs> but, you know, we always have to have a jumping off and a starting point, and that's, that's where they were. And, and I think this next year, as we move forward with it, they're excited about moving forward. Part of it is going to be uh, proud to be me in CESD. And proud to be me is because it's really important that they take pride in who they are and where they came from um, and in the traditions that they need to have involved within their learning environment. So we're bringing in um, keynote speakers 
who are going to talk about being successful and moving forward and that everyone needs to set their goals. And But then we're also including some of the traditional learnings because one of the things that the kids said is we don't know enough about our traditions. You know, it's not taught in the school and we don't have our grandparents around to to learn it from. So we are bringing in people to talk about the traditions, we're bringing in people to talk about the residential schools. So that there's a little bit for everyone. And because it's from grade five to 12, we're trying to hit um, subjects and things like that that really meet their needs. So more of the um, traditional like beading, weaving, things like that are for the younger students and more of the deeper thought uh, processes are, are with the older students. So what we did, uh, our steering committee talks about a lot of things about what we can do within our division to really promote uh, people thinking about the Indigenous education part of our curriculum. And we know that some of our students went out to like dream catchers and things like that, but it's very expensive to go out. So we figured if we pooled all the money that we would use sending out all of our students, and did our conference at um, a facility within our division, we would be able to really meet the needs of the students because the student, there'd be no cost to the students to come. It would be covered by the monies we would have already been sending out with them. And they're going away with that pride and they're going away with more knowledge. And also they become the voice in their schools to say, hey, can we do this in our own school? Can we?" Um, you know, have smudging in our school, can we? So they're going to go back with a lot of questions for their teachers, for their administrators to say, yeah, we need to continue this, not just as a one, one day thing, but continue it so that we can be proud of who we are. It's encouraged me a lot to be a part of the program. And I got the chance to see how narrow-minded people can be, but with the right um, attitude with with empowering them to think differently um, I see a lot of change and we have to take the little steps before we can get to where some of the bigger communities are because we are a small division <laughs>